Hi, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about what on earth do I do with all of my receipts? And if you watch the precursor to this, then you saw my video talking about shoebox.com. And uh, this is what you're looking at here is what you see once you're logged into your shoebox account. Now, as I mentioned, I, 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 well, I didn't mention this specifically, but what I did was I sent in a bunch of receipts. I took my, actually, October 2010, all those receipts, I shoved them in their envelope, which they give you. They give you their own envelope. You saw it. I had it in the video. And you send it in. And then you get an email from them that lets you know they've received your receipts. And then you get another email that lets you know when they've been scanned and sorted and organized. So look what they've done. They've got, they've got a Rouse Rewards. All the ones that they could identify, they have identified exactly where they're from. Look at that. I spent $8.90 at Western Bagel. Now, one of the things I wanted to test, and I told uh, the guy who contacted me from shoeboxed.com that I was going to test this, is I want to test the export. So you come over here under, you know, you, you have home, then you have receipts, and then we can go to export. So let's export this. And look at our choices. First of all, I, 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 I love this. I just saw this now for the first time before I went to record this screencast was that I can archive these in Evernote, which is beautiful. So I'm going to test that in a separate segment. But the thing I wanted to test now is the QuickBooks version. And so what I wanted to do was come in here and actually this is nice because they ask you for the debit account and credit card accounts and it says account names much must match exactly account names in QuickBooks otherwise they will be created as bank accounts so the debit account should be some expense account so what I'm gonna want to do is I'm going to want to create an account on QuickBooks that's designed just to capture this so what's nice is at least it won't necessarily do the old IIF file import formats what used to, what that used to do and this inspires some confidence in me that this may actually be a really good solution for QuickBooks import. I can at least create one account and call it unallocated receipts, right? And and you can call that an asset account. Whatever it is, something where it's going to be easy to go in there and just change the account to the appropriate expense account because the debit account is an expense account. I have to debit the meals expense, which let's say most of the receipts are going to be for meals in many cases. Uh, then you know, you're going to debit an expense account to increase that expense. The credit account should be something where, remember, these receipts theoretically should be the things I've paid cash for because anything that I've used a credit card or the business debit card for, I'm going to get by virtue of the download. So the only stuff I really want to send here, or download anyway for that matter, are, are the things that I've paid cash for, let's say, where I want to be able to import those into QuickBooks. Beyond that, I just want the receipts there so I can prove the expense later on. So the import is really just for things I've paid cash for, so I don't have to sit there entering all the receipts manually. So the debit account, again, should be, it could be just some generic expense account called unallocated expenses, because then you just go in there and, and edit the transaction and change it to the appropriate expense account, whether it's meals or office supplies, depending on what I actually spent the money on. The credit account, normally a credit would be to a bank account on a transaction like this, right? Because if I use the debit card, let's say, then I'm, I'm using, I'm paying cash for it. In a sense, it's taking the money right out of my bank account. So I would credit that bank account. Now, when I've paid cash for something, and you may have seen me talk about this in other videos, it, what I've done is I've, I've actually made a contribution into the business because I'm using cash out of my own pocket. I'm using personal funds in order to cover a business expense. So I'm loaning money to the business or I'm making a contribution and those two terms describe where on the balance sheet I want to put that if I'm loaning money to the business then it's a loan to the company it's a liability on the company's books because that means they're gonna pay me back if it's going to be a contribution into the equity of the company then th there's your answer right there it goes into the equity section of the balance sheet as an owner contribution or a shareholder contribution or however you describe it on your particular set of books it could be partner capital or maybe a member contribution if you've got an LLC whatever it is just 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 put it in there, okay? So um, that's what we want to do. Now, we're going to test this out. I'm going to go actually pause the recording of this video. I'm going to go set up a QuickBooks file, a dummy file, so I can test this, and we're going to see how it works. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are in a sample QuickBooks company file that I created called Take My Receipts Incorporated. And I'm going to show you how I do this. So, of course, I'm here at the chart of accounts, and I want to create a new account, so Control N for new. <clears throat> and let's do it this way let's do it as an expense account. And we'll say continue. And I'm going to call it Uncategorized Receipts. Did I do that right? Receipts. 
uncategorized receipts. So uncategorized receipts and save a new because now again we need a credit account. Remember, we need a debit and a credit when we bring these receipts in. So the credit account, like I said, could either be categorized as a loan to the company or, <clears throat> or as an equity contribution. So let's say we're going to do it as an equity contribution. And in fact, before I do this, we should check the equity accounts because I didn't on this new company file. There's shareholder distribution. So let's create shareholder contributions. And it's equity, continue shareholder contributions now if you remember the instructions on the shoebox website explained that the accounts had to match in terms of name exactly so let's make sure that we do that by uh, by copying and pasting the name so we have it exactly so I'm going to use a little sticky note here and I'm going to say shareholder contributions so this way I have the exact wording and I'll save and close here and then let's go back and get the unallocated receipt bits and I'll edit that account with an alt E and another E and I'm just highlighting it pressing control C on my keyboard to copy it coming back over to my sticky notes and now I've got the exact language so there can be no mistake about what the debit and the credit is and in case you're confused it might also help you to put that here to might say we're going to actually credit shareholder contributions you can do a little formatting on these sticky notes control B and then here is my debit be great if I could type that would go a long way to helping me do these screencast so now I've got these I'm gonna actually drag this back over to my other screen because now I want to bring up the shoebox website and there's my debit account so I'm actually gonna come over to my other screen Control C, Control V to paste, credit account. And I'm going to copy that out. Shareholder contributions. The account name is much matters exactly the account names in QuickBooks, otherwise, they'll be created as bank accounts. File name, we can call it Seth David Expenses. I like that. I think that's what you should call yours too if you're doing it. Call it Seth David Expenses. And then the date range is optional. I want it to do for all dates, so I'm going to leave those blank. And let's choose export receipts. And then it wants to open it, so let's save the file first. And then I like to bring over the folder where I intend it to go. And I just copy the whole file path there. Come over here, I'll choose save, OK. And then I've got my Firefox set to show me my downloads here. So you can right click this and choose open containing folder. And now I've got both folders. And I can just drag it in here. Because now we're ready to do the QuickBooks import. So we can close these. And now let's go over to QuickBooks. And now I want to grab this URL, or not URL, but file path. Copy it. Because now when I go to QuickBooks, I can go to File, Utilities, Import, IIF Files, and I can paste my file path right in here, choose Open. See, so I don't have to go browsing around. It's much easier. <coughs> I select the file, <coughs> click Open, and let's see how it does. It says your data has been imported. And look at this, shareholder contributions came up with their total, and I don't you may not have noticed this, but I did, the total of the receipts I had sent them. Remember, I haven't really started using this officially yet. I just did it as a test to see how it works. But over here they show me the total of my receipts is twenty nine seventy seven thirteen. So that inspires confidence in me, folks. It inspires confidence. Now we can go into our unallocated receipts. And actually let's just run a quick PL. Boop, 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 boop. We'll do it for all dates. Un uncategorized receipts. I can double click that. Of course, that's the only thing on the books. So there's nothing else on the books, but obviously there should be nothing else in this account for sure when you do the import because, you know, of course, as a as a consultant, you know, who consults with companies on QuickBooks, when you're doing a process like this, the first thing I'm going to tell you is this needs to be cleaned out immediately. You don't want to sit here leaving these expenses on the books. <clears throat> so one thing, what I would do here is we they came in as names, and these are all, notice they all came in as general journals. be interesting to see how they handled the names. They come in as other names. So, frankly, you're going to want to clean that up and change those to um, to vendors. 
But in the meantime, what I would do is I would sort this by name. Because now what I can do is I can take all of the same name at once and I can say, okay, uh, the ones that just say Costco are, I'm gonna, are probably Costco gas. Obviously, you'd want to confirm that. But all I have to do now is double click one and change the debit to fuel, which is not, or maybe they have gas. I just went with a default chart of accounts. So, fuel, setup, expense, continue. Save and close. This is only if you have to actually create the account on your books. If you're if you've got a company file that's up and running, you theoretically shouldn't have to do too much of this. So that gets that one out. Ninety nine cent store. I'd have to see what I bought. Best Buy, electronics, or computer equipment, computer and internet expenses. Save and close. Yes, yes. And it updates. And so you go down here, the coffee bean and tea leaf. That's obviously going to be meals. Boom. Done. So this is great. As long as you do the right preparation and set up your accounts in QuickBooks and do it right from the export, this works beautifully. It's nice and clean. There's a little bit of cleanup work to do, but it's still a heck of a lot faster than actually sitting there writing checks out of a petty cash account. I have no bank account set up on this book, on this set of books. I, it, it's, it's still a lot faster than having to sit there writing checks out of a petty cash account in order to get these receipts on the books. Because again, you saw the import took two seconds. Now all I've got to do is double click these and just change the expense account. That's all I have to do. Just change it from uncategorized receipts to meals. And then and you can even leave the names as other names. I imagine if the name was already found on the books as a vendor, it'll probably stay that way. But you know what? Uh, don't quote me on that. Try it out, and if you do try it out and get a result, let me know. Let me know what you come up with. So, uh, but that is it. I would uh, definitely highly recommend using this service. I am going to start using it now that I've actually had a chance to test it out myself. And in the next segment, I'm going to go play with the uh, the Evernote feature. So, uh, if you're interested in that, stay tuned. If not, have a nice day. Send me an email. I love you, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. Okay, so now we're going to look at the shoeboxed export for Evernote. Now, you've seen possibly that I have done a tutorial on Evernote that uh, shows you what Evernote is all about and how it's used. You can download it for $5 in my Knowledge Center. It's a full length, it's, well, it's a defined full length. It's about a 20 minute video that walks you through how to use Evernote. And I'm going to be posting a follow up on it soon because they keep uh, dropping uh, upgrades. You know that are of course are included if you've paid for the product, and and uh, there's some great new features that have come out since I had recorded that video. But in any case, um, Evernote's a great way to keep track of information. So I'm very curious to see how the the Evernote archive works. So we're going to check this off, and it says copy your Evernote incoming email from Evernote settings page and paste it here. Shoebox will remember this email for future use. All right, so let me do that. I'll log into my Evernote account. Sure, looks like I'm already in. So now I need, there's my email Evernotes to right there. Great. Now everybody's going to start emailing me to my Evernote. And I'll get your receipts. Put my email in your Evernote setup and shoebox. Um, okay. So I put my Evernote email address in there. I can set a date range again, which is optional. If I want all receipts, then... Uh, then I can just do that. And notice they've got some other formats here. Of course, you can export to Microsoft Excel, which I'm going to do next because obviously, you know, as an Excel whiz, then I'm going to want to show you how to kind of take whatever they, however they export it into Excel and cut it up. CSV is really just another version of an Excel. If you're doing CF, CSV, you might as well do Excel unless you want the CSV because that's such a generic format that it can easily be imported from there into many other database formats like an Access database. Um, look at this, you can even do a PDF expense table with receipt images. That's exciting. So lots of great options. So I encourage you to play with this yourself. I'm just going to focus on the things, frankly, that get me excited, like, like Evernote. So let's uh, export receipts. And I'll be really curious to see how this works. It says, an unexpected error occurred during the export. Please try again later or contact Shoebox support. Great. So... Um, and notice here, by the way, I could have selected uh, receipts to export. So maybe I didn't copy the uh, email incorrectly. Let's see. Just take it out of there. 
And let's try that again. Archive to Evernote. We'll try it one more time. Then if it doesn't work, I guess I have to contact them and find out why my my Evernote's not working. Nope, now it worked. It says receipt sent to Evernote. Check your Evernote account. So let me pull up my Evernote and let me take it off screen to make sure there's nothing uh, sort of private there. And uh, I'll just go to my little, I have a notebook in here that I call Inbox. So we'll just use that. And I hit my little sync button on Evernote. And it's updating. So it sounds like it looks like it's getting the information. You look down here, updating client database. So I'm going to bring back off screen. And then we're going to take a look once it's done updating at what it gave me. So look at this. It gives me a, a PDF of the receipts. So it, and it looks like it breaks it up into pages even on Evernote. So this is great. This is great stuff. I mean, I don't know that you'd want to overload your Evernote with all these receipts, but you know, it might be that you want to set a date range and say you want to set, or if, if when the IRS agent is there and he says, I want a receipt from this date, you can do the export of the date range and you've got it right here. And speaking of which, speaking of the IRS agent, uh, I just wanted to show you to make sure that you could see that I'm not making this up. When you go to their home page, they will show you that in fact the IRS does accept their receipts. If we just go to their home page here, we should be able to find it. Okay, so I actually paused recording for a couple minutes here and I found it on the Shoeboxed blog <clears throat> which is blog.shoeboxed.com. You click right on their taxes and you'll see it has it here. The IRS accepts digital receipts, so using Shoebox to organize your receipts for your taxes is a no-brainer. With Shoebox, we'll scan and organize your receipts for you throughout the year so you won't have to stress out come tax time. Make bookkeeping and audits a non-event by letting Shoebox, they say letting us, but I'm reading it, so I'm putting it in their person, letting Shoebox take care of receipts for you. And then here's more resources for you to learn more. So uh, it's there. You can find the information. They do support it. And uh, and once again, going back to uh, how the Evernote integration works, it, it seems to work quite well. It brought in, well, quite a few receipts here, which I wasn't planning on. Let's see what I spent at Gordon Beers. $41.28, my God. God and my server was Lindsay. I mean, look at the information you can you can have at your fingertips on any given day. I can figure out who my server was at Gordon Biersch on October 9th, 2010. Isn't that great? So, all kidding aside, this is a great solution. I was concerned about how clean the QuickBooks import was going to be. I've seen that. I've demonstrated it here in this video. So now you can see it. It's a clean import. You just have to do a little preparation in advance. But as with many things, a little preparation in advance saves you a ton. Of a ton of time in the future. So all you have to do is create two accounts in QuickBooks to capture the import so that you can then go in and very easily reallocate things to the appropriate expense accounts. And that's all you'll have to do is change the expense account. So so uh, use the link I'm providing you with. It's my affiliate link. I do get credit for referring you to them. So I do earn a small commission every time you sign up, every time one of you signs up for Shoebox through my affiliate link. So I do hope that you will use that and help me out, especially if you've made the decision after seeing this that this is something that's really going to help you um, so help me help you to help me to help you or something like that and I, I really do hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day I look forward to seeing you on the web